What's up, peers, and welcome to Bitcoin to the Max here on the World Crypto Network. And today we continue the question and answer session here with a question from Rolando Tech. And he's asking, explain, how can Bitcoin fight back against paper Bitcoin inflation if the future institution can print unlimited paper Bitcoin? And that's a really, really good question, Rolando. What can we as Bitcoin users do to protect ourselves against inflation of the money supply? Well, and first and foremost, that truly is run your own full note because that already helps a lot. Because when you make your own monetary rules, and while well, it just happens that your individual monetary rules are Nakamoto consensus, then you are a part of the enforcement mechanism to make sure that no additional Bitcoin will be created. For example, if there would be a critical bug in the system and you realize that on your own individual note that, oh no, there's this fraudulent transaction that has just created 100,000 Bitcoin out of thin air, which probably could have happened with the inflation bug as we've seen it recently in Bitcoin, then you on your own individual node could say, no, I just don't accept this block as valid. And then, of course, you know, you, you kick this out, you update your software, you make sure that the, uh, that the bug is fixed, and then you go on your merry way. And that has already prevented the on-chain inflation, uh, even with real Bitcoin, right? So... Uh, Running your own full node is the first of many steps that you can and that you probably should take in order to make sure that you are secure against inflation. Then further, let's, let's set aside the possibility of having on-chain inflation of the money base, right, of the UTXO and value field in every Bitcoin uh, transaction. Well, then you still have the issue that you, when you grant a centralized authority the access to your precious Satoshis and you give them the private keys, well, then you no longer validate the consensus yourself. And especially, you no longer have access to the private key and thus you don't really own the Bitcoin on chain. What you might get in return is a paper certificate. For example, if you put your funds on Coinbase, they will not give you Bitcoin back, but rather they will give you a certificate that is linked to your trading account. Right? And then you can you know, trade these claims on Bitcoin. But it's important to realize that they are not Bitcoin. They are claims on Bitcoin. And that is a massive, massive difference. Because these claims on Bitcoin inherently, because they claim that you can get Bitcoin from another party, there is a centralized party involved. And well, centralized parties are security holds. So there is the potential that, you know, Coinbase is going to shut off your account and you will no longer have access to the true Bitcoin, which you then only hold the paper receipt, right? You say, oh, but here's my Coinbase account and I'm supposed to have Bitcoin in there, but apparently you do not because Coinbase just well, quit your account. And that, of course, then could also mean that all, you put one, one Bitcoin into the Coinbase account or especially the Mt. Gox account. And then Mt. Gox issues additional paper receipts. They give the account holders of Mt. Gox more Bitcoin, quote unquote, or claims on Bitcoin, as are actually in their cold storage. As we have literally seen with Mt. Gox, they lost a bunch of Bitcoin on chain, the true Bitcoin, and they just kept the claims on Bitcoin the same. So we did have fractional reserve there. So, well, what can you do against that? Hold your own keys. Don't give away the sovereignty over your money. Don't let others represent you, but present yourself as a sovereign node, not just on a node level, not just validating consensus yourself, but probably especially by controlling your own keys and by making sure that you are the only individual that has access to, these, to this information, to these Bitcoin. And that is the only way that you as an individual can truly make sure that your Bitcoin are not being fractional reserved. And what can we do uh, even though, so let's assume that you, Orlando, have all uh, your, you know, you run your own node, you control all your keys. What can you do that there are no other institutions that create additional claims on Bitcoin for other people? Uh, well, I mean, first of all, 
it's not really your Bitcoin. So it's not really your say on what other people do with their Bitcoin. And if these other peers voluntarily engage in the fractional reserve scheme, then it's not up to you to force them to stop, right? However, of course, we know or you know, we can learn and come to the understanding that fractional reserve is not optimal in Bitcoin. And how do we then prevent others from falling for this trap? Pretty much what I'm doing right now, educating making sure that others have the information at their disposal and helping them on their path of understanding that controlling your keys is essential. And then making sure uh, that they have all the tools at their disposal to actually control their own keys, to manifest the change in accordance to the understanding of the information provided. We need to help peers to achieve Bitcoin wisdom, to actually hold their keys and to be active and act upon uh, this information and the understanding that the sound money attribute of Bitcoin is extremely important. And of course, the financial self-sovereignty aspect. So what can we do against fractional reserve? Hold your keys, run your own note and tell others. Peers, thank you very much for joining me here on Bitcoin to the max. And as always, Bye-bye.